your life. Hi, everyone. Hi everyone, welcome to the demo of uh, March, uh, uh, March demo uh, by, uh, by Falk. Uh, so we have uh, Sri Harsha Anadore as the artist uh, showing uh, the demo of, of on photography. Uh, about Sri Harsha, I know Sri Harsha uh, uh, before he joined Falk. Uh, so, yeah. uh, so he was supposed to come as a, as a art, demo artist two years back uh, and I had invited him, but he just, he couldn't make it. But next month he came as a member, as a, as a uh, kind of participant to see how the, the show go, the meeting goes. And he was interested to join the group and he became the member from then on. And uh, he's been very active uh, participant as a member. And uh, also he gave a lot of help during the, the exhibitions we had in the last year. And then uh, he was uh, like he was not co very confident that he could he was uh, he would be winning an award, but he was very much surprised last time when we have the uh, the first of our virtual art show and uh, Sri Harsha won two awards and uh, the, the, our first virtual art show we had uh, it was called Impressions and congratulations Sri Harsha for, uh, for winning the awards. And uh, Sri Harsha has his own style, it's just not photography. He has he's a different style. It's more artistic than just taking the photos. Uh, so we have the honor of having him uh, as uh, showing his artistic uh, photography skills to us. And uh, personally, I've attended some of his workshops uh, and I have learned a lot from him uh, about the workshops. I feel bad that we are not able to do such workshops uh, because of COVID, but hopefully we get back and we'll be able to do it uh, in the next coming months. Till then, so we will see the demo and uh, be interacting, interact with him to learn more about the photography and more artistic side of photography. Uh, so over to you, Sri Harsha. All right, um, thank you. I appreciate that uh, kind words. Um, it makes me double nervous that, uh, that I'm speaking to many good artists here. Um, what can I say? I'm, my hands are shivering a little bit, but I'll, I'll manage myself up. Um, so what value can I add to people who are already good in composing their artwork? So um, I come from a background of photography and I use it as a, as a tool to tell stories. So it is a, a field of fine art photography, which is kind of different from documentaries or, you know, um, candid charts are photojournalism. So it is uh, photography with, a, with an artistic intention to say that I want to tell you what I feel about this scene rather than capturing the moment or you know, telling as is. So this is where I, I associate myself with, with an artist who, who uses her brush, uh, her mind and then her abstract thinking, his or her abstract thinking to tell a story. So. This is where the little story about the fine arts photography comes from. So uh, may I share the screen? Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, with that uh, brief uh, little nervous talk, um, I would be... Hmm. <clears throat> yeah, it's taking time to load here, sir. Thanks. Um, uh, I think. Is the line you... cutting up? Yeah. Okay. I do not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sharing okay. mm. uh, unexpected.
Did we lose Yasha? Maybe he's joining in again. Can you all hear me? Yes. We okay. Can, yeah. Yes, Shubha. Shubha, you want to stop going live? Uh, again, it takes time to start live, so let me see. Yeah. Is that? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. Mm. Okay. Um, okay. So my demo flow is uh, as follows. I'll probably talk about. I'll give a demo for about 15, okay. 15 minutes, and then uh, I will pick up questions as as we go uh, in the chat section. Or, or that could be started out to the end. And then I'll have about 10 minutes of Q&A. And then I have about six images for submitted for image critic. And I'll probably have a good discussion about that one. Uh, one uh, disclaimer here, this is not very specific to uh, the photography uh, or the camera technical details. The lenses, cameras, the all those things are excluded from this discussion. So I, as I mentioned before, uh, fine arts photography has nothing to do with speciality of cameras or lenses. So it's got to do with the artists like you who think in abstract, who thinks in air, and then make a creation of your own. So uh, that's about it. And looks like there's about two to three seconds of delay on the Zoom uh, by the time I do something and then by the time you guys see it. So uh, please bear with me on that one. I might have uh, you know, gone little ahead, and then the image will show up on your screen in a moment. So, um, having said that, that's the agenda for it. So, I have lots of things to talk about the composition uh, in fine arts photography or in arts in general. So, these are some of the practices, not the rules per se. Um, I'm not going to discuss uh, quite a lot of them here, but whatever I have highlighted here in blue, I'm going to talk probably talk about a little bit and then show a couple of demonstrations as to what I really mean by saying that. So um, I will start off with uh, having a blank screen and talk about uh, where to put the subject, how a mind goes about the psychology behind uh, putting the subject uh, in a rule of thirds, uh, diagonals and symmetry and beyond. So I will begin with that one uh, with an example. Um, I'll share the screen in, in a moment. So something going on with the sharing of the screen, so, okay. Okay, so uh, I think you can see this, the screen right now, right? Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, we can. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, any image uh, to begin with will have two components in it. One is the uh, the subject itself and then the, the negative space, which is not the subject. So um, as you can see here, there is a lot of space which is empty for uh, this um, red tail hawk, which is sitting here. So um, the, uh, the placement of the subject demands that there is an equal weightage between the subject and the negative space. Negative space is, is where this hawk is looking at. So if you happen to place a, place a subject right in the middle, for example, as a bullseye, then all the space which is surrounding it becomes a negative space. So imagine that the physics behind this one, the psychology behind this one is, is that you are looking at a big uh, mural and there is, uh, there is a subject right in the middle of the mural and then your, your attention is drawn right into the middle and then you will never have a chance to get out of that one. That's because the macular vision of the humans is designed to go for the center of any presentation. And anything on the periphery will be a, a, a peripheral vision 
which will only get, get attracted if there is a huge contrast or huge uh, saturation in color or anything like that. So use of uh, the negative space is extremely important in, in presentation or storytelling. Imagine this one, if the hawk were to look the other way around, like if it were to look away from the screen, then the use of negative space is useless because now the attention of the hawk is away from this negative space and it is not bringing your attention back to the screen. So this is the, the first um, the, the rule or the, or the good guide on the, on, the, on the composition that we need to make the viewer come back to the frame by using the negative space, which will give us an opportunity to tell the story. So here the hawk face is now facing onto the, onto the negative space, which is, which is left side and down, which may bring you the question that what is it looking on? So your story should always end with a question, uh, making the, the viewer wonder what is it looking for? What, what, what's going on behind it? What is the story behind it? So any unanswered questions will make it come, make the viewer to come back and ask the questions again and again. So that's the theory which is going behind uh, this, this kind of a positive negative space. I'll give you another example. Um, This again, I need to share this once more. So every time I share it, there's a little bit of lag, so please bear with me. Um, so I, I'll need to double check whether you see this image or not. Able to see. Okay, so uh, here again, the negative space is behind this man who happens to be my father. So, and then he's looking out into the window. So uh, his, his gaze is outside of the window and you cannot know what is going on outside the window. So that leaves the question that he's looking into the negative space and then it raises the question that, okay, what is he looking for? What is he, what is going on in his mind? So, and also observe that the other side of, of the frame is also a negative space, which is, which, which eliminates his knees. So, He's in a comfortable position, which makes you comfortable that he is not in a distress. So storytelling always involves use of a good negative space and a good positive space in the, in the frame. So um, uh, this is the images. If you split into basic two forms, it will have, it will have positive or negative spaces. So with that one, the story starts. So let me stop this one and give, give another quick example before I move on to next. Okay, here is a, is a rare example where the, uh, this is a Clark's Grebe. Uh, it's a parenting uh, you know, example where the our subject is, is, is a bullseye in the it is middle of the frame. Right now, you can imagine that um, the negative space is, is equally surrounded all over the space, right? So this is just an, one um, uh, exception to the rule that you will not be placing the subject in the middle. Now the story is that, yes, uh, the parenting is, is pretty hard and the, the father has three chicks on his back and the mother is feeding the chicks. So now the story goes that, okay, are they safe in their environment? Are they, you know, so all the negative space, which has nothing around it, helps give the comfort that, yeah, there is a, there's a story that the family feels, feels comfortable. So um, the use of negative space is extremely important, as important as the positive space itself. So with that one, it gives me a segue to the next topic of the frame which is now I'll add one more element to the subject, the frame, which is, um, so now I come back to my, my presentation slide. So now I, I'll see that it's about the diagonals. So many, many times the, the rule of thirds it's been, um, or, or the, it's, it's called the rule of thirds. So it gives you an impression that it needs to be broken. So 
but that's not the point of having a rule. So uh, it's it's been oversold. So rule of third gives you a good imagination of what is supposed to be done with your image. So I think everybody in this artist community knows about rule of third and then they're very familiar with it. But let me jump on to the next one, which is called the diagonals. Diagonal is an, another composition practice, which, which many people use it to effectively tell the stories. So uh, I will pick up an example. Okay, so this is a Photoshop image. Uh, it will take a um, couple of seconds to load it because it's a high resolution picture. So um, this is a-, a Everybody is quiet. Maybe you, I think we should, you can, uh, you can ask questions also in between. I think, yeah, I think everybody is kind of- so, Am I going too fast or am I- No, I think, no, they- I'm a little nervous about the uh, talk, so. Everyone is very quiet, so I think we can make it more interactive. If you have any questions, so okay, uh, yeah, I can I can field some questions if you if you think that that needs to be yeah <laughs> yeah, but very nice photos so far, and uh, each one is so unique. <laughs> so, so yeah, okay, sure. thank yeah. you. So uh, uh, I I designed this demo such a way that I cover from basic of uh, use of only positive negative space, and then slowly gradually adding one element at a time. So that we we would know what 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 is a good composition means. So here you see I'm talking about the diagonal. So the diagonal is is a line which converts connects from one end to the other end, and then this is another. It's called the secondary diagonal. If you can see my cursor, is everybody see able to see my cursor? Yes. Okay. So I can I can go ahead and and then and then draw something over it. Let's see. So uh, if, as you can see, the, uh, the object is placed right on the diagonal. You can see the head of the, of the hummingbird is placed right, right on the diagonal. The other interesting part is the nest of the, of the hummingbird, which is the secondary subject so far, has been placed on secondary diagonal. So placing uh, elements on the diagonal, which is the subject on the diagonal, Kind of helps the viewer to uh, to guide through the whole of the frame and then come back to the center, which is the which is the uh, the two chicks which are getting fed by the mama yeah, I, hummingbird. So um, so placing um, so yeah, placing one, the sorry say it again please. Uh, just one quick question on this. Yes. Uh, so do you, when you, when you are clicking the picture, do you keep this in mind or do you, when you crop it and you calculate? No. Like um, it, so when you're clicking it, it's, it's always not possible to uh, make sure that yeah. they sit on the diagonal. So yeah. fine art photography is what I want to present to you. So it's not yeah. what I click. So uh, lots of things go behind the scene uh, to prepare this photo photograph. So there may be an impending branch uh, which is crossing over, for example. There may be a, uh, a tangent which is coming in. I'll explain what a tangent is in a little while. And then this is the, uh, the final result of what I want to present. So this is not a candid shot. This is not a wildlife photography shot. This is not a photojournalism. So this is not for a documentary. This is how a, a, um, a watercolor artist or a, a you know, painter or somebody would imagine what to paint, right? So what to present to an audience. So uh, it is extremely processed. It is, uh, I would say, uh, it takes me about anywhere between an hour to get to that state of presentable uh, photograph. Okay. Right? So Thank it is you. done in a, with a deliberate intention that I want to place the head right on the intersection of the diagonal 
and the texture on the on the on the nest needs to be this way. The saturation needs to be that way, which I'll I'll explain in a minute. How how uh, as I'm adding one ingredient at a time, I'll come to that point. So uh, the second ingredient which I'm talking about is the diagonal placement of the of the major uh, uh, the subject and the secondary subject. And you can also observe that there is there is still a negative space around the the bird. And there is enough space at the bottom as well. So the important of the negative space, as I mentioned before, is also that it gives you the ambience feeling that this bird is somewhere in the outdoor and the light is shining from the top right side. So that gives you that. Um, let me switch over to the next one. Uh, I have a question. Yes, so, please. So uh, when you click the photograph, do you recommend taking the uh, central composition or um, the rule of third composition? So I will always place it in the rule of third composition. So it helps me and I will usually go a little bit zoomed out so that I will have enough pixels to crop. So if I were to do a very tight cropping on the camera itself, then I will not have any uh, negative space to add later on. So I will have, usually tend to have a little bit more negative space than what I normally would have. And then I, when I crop it, I usually don't want to crop more than more than um, 20 to 30 percent. So I, I'm very judicious about using that one, that space. But I want to have a lot of negative space around the subject so that I can, I can manipulate the image later on the way I want it. So uh, this will be evident when I when you see the second uh, image in a minute. So if I can just add to the the question which was just asked about um, can we keep the subject to center in one third? If I may just add that um, any uh, uh, professional photographer or uh -huh. artist when when a photograph is judged or when a pen painting is judged, it is generally uh, supposed to be a weak of an artist if the if the subject is put on the center without an intention because uh, center uh, subjects are placed on the center but it needs to have some symmetry and something in their mind but in general <laughs> centrally placed objects without an intention are supposed to be a weakness of an artist um, yes i i understand your comment uh, it is true. It is considered to be a little bit not so favorable composition. But having said that, there are lots of exceptions for that rule. And then rules are, are, are always, those rules are always broken. So I did show you the, the picture of a grebe with his family, right? That's a centrally placed subject with a, with a negative space around. So there are few examples like that where uh, subjects are placed in the center. But you're right. It's always better to put it on a rule of third or on a diagonal or you know any of that kind. So, um, having said that, let me uh, 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 switch to the next example, which is. Uh, I just wanted to show you the variety of pictures, which is uh, which gives you an idea that uh, how uniformly that rule of diagonal has been used. So that's the reason I'm uh, I'm giving. Uh, at least three examples per uh, per idea. I have a, I have a question. Um, you don't have to do this right now, but I was curious. You mentioned that the hummingbird photo was pretty heavily processed, and you'd spent quite a bit of time to get yes. it to to that where you were happy with it. And I'd be curious to see what it looked like originally before you did all that. What your your starting raw material was, so to speak. Um, am I missing it? Ah, hello? Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Uh, sorry, I missed the question completely because the Zoom has been, uh, I don't know what's going on. So uh, can you please say it again? Oh, sure. Uh, I was curious, you don't need to do this right now, but uh, I was curious, you mentioned that the hummingbird photo was mm. pretty heavily processed and you'd spent quite a bit of time getting it to the point where you really liked it, um, what, what, we, what you showed us. So I was curious what the uh, original photo looked like before you, before you did all that, kind of what okay. your, your raw material was that you started with. <laughs> okay, uh, I will share you at the end of the. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll show you how it, it would have looked like uh, before. Yeah. 
So I, I just give you an example that I use a 500 millimeter lens, which is, which, which kind of zooms in a lot. And then it, I was about 10 to 15 feet away from the bird. So I could get a good uh, view of the bird and, and it's sick. So I didn't have to do a lot of cropping, but as you, as you rightly noted, I had to do a lot of uh, removal of branches, you know, mm. light directions, uh, amplify light directions, which I'm going to do it in the in the demo section, the example section in a minute. Cool. Okay. Uh, so I just wanted to add a couple of more, uh, you know, uh, points to this one, then move on to, and I come to the demo, I'll show you how, how it's done. So this is another example of a Milky Way. And when you, when you, when you take the photograph of Milky Way, this is a half dome. Uh, are you able to see the screen? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the half dome Yosemite National Park. Uh, the Milky Way just hugs to the surface here. And then this is the Awani, uh, you know, village hotel. Uh, here again, you think about the composition where you want to put the, uh, the subjects on the diagonal. So again, you can, as you can see, the Awani village, which is which is glowing because of the uh, you know lights from the from its rooms, uh, feel like it's a forest fire. And then the core of the Milky Way is sitting on the other diagonal. So uh, compositionally, this can be planned well because this is a a long time shot. Uh, you can plan to place the 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 two subjects wherever you want it. So you don't have to. You know, you can. This can be done in the in the camera. I don't have to do it in the post. So this is another example where subjects, two subjects, opposing subjects are placed right now on the diagonal line. So, um, yeah, let me go. Uh, okay, I'm. Uh, One more example. Okay, here again, you can see uh, this, these kind of charts can be framed right in the camera. You don't have to do it uh, post again. Uh, as you can see now, there is a natural diag diagonal which is being shown by the features in the photograph itself. So the cliff coming down and then the waves falling up and then you place the dog which is picking up its ball right on the, on the one third and then the diagonal which is secondary diagonal. And also the end of the cliff is also right on the, on the center of the diagonal. So this way there is equal space between the, the negative space on the top negative space on the right bottom and the negative space at the bottom. So the user is not uh, is one not wandering around or not in a, in a kind of tense mood to see what to look for. So he always back, goes back and forth between the dog and then the cliff and then comes down to see that there's a wave and then the, and then the, and then the tree and everything. So user, the intention of the user is to lock him into the frame and then not him lose out of the frame. So. That's the, that's the rule why there is a rule of diagonal, there is rule of two thirds, et cetera. So that's my third example. So let me add one more to the mix right now. Um, every time I need to switch the... Uh, okay. So uh, we talked about this one and then I, I want to talk about the, the, the use of um, uh, it looks like you have some box on the this thing. It's just blocking the view of when you share. Block. Um, There's sorry. a window. There's a window which is blocking. Yeah. You can see. Uh, you can see the presentation, but not. Really. Uh, not sure. It's... Okay. Not. Yeah, we're missing some parts. It's okay, if it's uh, not, you're not able to find out. <laughs> There's a gray box. Yeah, now it's gone. You, I think it looks like a mode, so we can see in the presentation now. Yeah. Mm. Okay. No, now it came in the middle, so <laughs> it's blocking the whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that's that's exactly the the window. It says that the zoom ex, zoom is quitting up normally. So I don't know why it keeps dropping me off. Today oh. is the. It never used to happen to me, so I don't know. Okay. Uh, I will move on to the perspective uh, part of the 
of the composition. So if I'm going too fast on it or covering too many things, then I'll stop me. I, I think I, I will, I'll be happy to uh, go slow on this one. So um, creating dimension is another very important part of the composition. So talked about uh, positive negative space, putting the, the subjects on a diagonal, symmetries and, and having uh, space around the subject and all those things. So now um, a subject, a photograph will fall flat if it doesn't have dimensions. The dimension in the sense of X and Y coordinates, which is uh, length and then the breadth of the, of the image, as well as the depth of the image. So um, I have a couple of examples to, uh, it, you all know that the perspective lines the shapes add dimension to the subject, which is a very simple example I'll, I'll start off with. Are you able to see the whole screen or just the one which I share? Hello? Just the, just the one you share. Yeah, it's I fine. I think we are good now. Uh, we can continue. You can see the screen. I see the slideshow right now. Oh, I see. So, okay, let me let me pick it up. Uh, I'll, I'll pick it up. In a minute. So, I'm I'm not be. Whenever I open the the high resolution Photoshop, it gives me trouble. So, mm -hmm. I think uh, I'm not able to cast that that. That's probably the reason, heating up all the... Uh, so whenever you think about the perspective, so you, you're able to see this before, right? No. Just, just I started, hopefully it comes. It's a blank, blank screen. Huh. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, Let me see there is a gray block though in the middle. There's a gray, yeah, oh, yeah there's gone. Yeah. Very beautiful photograph. Yes. It's so beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is the, 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 the perspective everybody sees normally. So this has uh, lines and shapes and everything. So I'm, I will not be talking about this kind of perspective uh, in my presentation. So this is just a segue to what I'm, I'm, I'm about to talk. So as you can see, the lines are po pointing here. Uh, there are perspective uh, measures in terms of these, these light sources, the handrails and everything. So I, it makes a good photograph, uh, but what I'm after is, is um, Okay, what I'm after is the, is the perspective created by the direction of the light and not by the lines of the shapes. So um, it's usually not used very effectively by many artists, but I would want to expose this to already mature artists like you uh, to see uh, what a direction of the light could mean in terms of adding perspective value. So uh, you can see this, this, this black and white image, right? Hello? Yes, yeah. Okay, so yes. Um, this is this was taken at San Jose, uh, Santa Clara Fairgrounds, um, one of the uh, Ferris wheels. Um, not only the lines are bending, the, the footprint, footprints are taking you to the ticket booth here, but there is also a kind of light which wraps around all the wall here. So the highest light is where 
you draw the subject into and then the, the light fades away from this end to this end, which gives you a perspective that I'm entering a tunnel kind of a feeling, right? If I were not to have this light perspective, then the image becomes flat in the sense that if the value on the left side, right side is the same as the value on the left side of the wall, then the, the depth of the wall is not felt. So this is a, a soft perspective being introduced by the direction of light. And also uh, take a look at the, the bright spot on the top right corner. It also gives you a, a depth perception that there is a light source coming out of the window, which is actually light, light painting the uh, on the roof there, right? So that also adds the dimension to the, uh, to, the, to the roof telling that the roof is not flat. So this is a soft a perspective addition which is normally played out quite a bit in the black and white photography because black and white photography gives you an option, extra freedom that you will not have in a color photography is that every color can be used as a perspective uh, light source. So imagine that all the, uh, the windows were to be you know, bright light, then your, your, your eye goes to the window, not the light itself, right? If, if, the, if the Ferris wheel had all sorts of bright color, then the, the attention really goes to the Ferris wheel itself directly, never comes out of it. So black and white gives, you an, gives me an extra tool that I can gradient the, the light away from, from here and give you a kind of a tunnel, tunnel view into the, into the uh, subject I want. So um, this is one kind of a perspective which I want to add to the mix. So uh, let me go back, give another, uh, example. So I'm aware of the time. I'll come to this one real quick. Um, um, so this is another example of using um, uh, light direction as a perspective. So as you can see, the, the original image uh, probably wouldn't have this light direction and then artist has amplified this light uh, to his uh, taste. So uh, it gives an impression that there is a foliage in the front here and then the temple is at the back and there, is, there are clouds here, impending clouds and then the sun has just broken in the top right corner. So you can now feel the depth of the, of the, of the composition in the sense that uh, the temple is, is on the far end and is placed right on the, on the diagonal, secondary diagonal, the light sources on the diagonal, you can follow that one. And there is a depth from, from right bottom corner to the left bottom corner. So you can see that the foliage is, is pretty uh, thick and then goes from uh, uh, bottom to the, the middle of the frame. So if this were not to be done this way, the whole uh, photograph would have appeared very flat. So I'm using light as a, as a perspective tool here to, to demonstrate that uh, a, a depth can be uh, amplified by light itself. So, okay. um, so next now I'll come to, Okay, I will now take an example uh, to demonstrate something else. So, okay, I'll start sharing the. So this one is being uh, the the next image is from the Lightroom. Uh, it's not specific to Lightroom or any of the image processing tool. Uh, but it might just be a little bit lag on this tool. So bear with me on this one. So can you see the screen? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, okay. yes. Yeah, please give me feedback. I, I'm, 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 I'm running dark with the Zoom uh, giving me, uh, you know, escaping me out of every once in a while. So uh, this is a it photograph. Okay, great. So this is a photograph which was taken when we had a, a too much of smoke uh, you know, from burning of Sierra's uh, forest there. So this was taken in the Eastern Sierras when we had a fall color, but the colors were really dull because of the, of the smoke. 
So this is a the raw image, which was as the camera sees it. Now I'm going to process in front of you how, as Dennis was asking, uh, how to add uh, depth to this uh, image, how to bring out details from this image, right? So this is what we generally see with our hand, with our with our eyes when we look at it. It's a lot of haze everywhere. There is no detail anywhere. So I will start usually start off with. Okay, as I mentioned, I will start off with a rule of third and then the uh, diagonal line, right? So what is my, my subject? My subject is somewhere uh, here, which is the, the tree line, which has a beautiful color, right? So I would usually crop off some of the part of the, um, well, let me choose the, um, Okay, I will need to put the put the uh, the end of the river right on the one third diagonal. So, which is this point? You can see my cursor, right? Yeah. Okay. So now this is how the image looks like from the, from the cropping. So now I have the initial cropping, which is sitting on the diagonal, my, my final point, right? So now I need to add depth to this image and a kind of a feeling of atmosphere. So uh, going, going back to physics, what is atmosphere is there is a, there is a humidity content and on top of it, there is hazier, right? So objects which are closer to the camera and closer to the eyes are, are having more details than the objects which are farther away. So now a couple of things needs to be done. So which is um, you need to increase the contrast on the foreground, right? So let me um, bring up the contrast on the foreground because contrast is the one which I see when it is close to the eyes. And also, the warmer the color it is, it brings the, the objects to the, to the front of the image. Okay, I'll show you in a minute how a colder color will push it backwards. So uh, there, is a, there is a color concept uh, theory in the composition telling that if the saturation, the contrast, and the colors are brighter, then it pushes forward in the composition. If the colors are cold, there is no details um, and the contrast is low, it pushes it backwards in the composition. So you, you're, you're all aware of, of that kind of a uh, thing. So this is what I'm trying to do right now that I am adding contrast, I'm adding warm to the thing, uh, warm to the foreground subjects and then I'm boosting their um, colors up. So as you can rightly saw, the, the tree tank trunk of this aspen tree got boosted, right? Now I need to push the back, uh, you know, objects a little backwards. So I'll show you the. Sri Harsha, what program are you using? Uh, this is uh, Lightroom. Just okay. for the simplicity, I, I would usually go, go back to my, uh, my Photoshop, uh, but uh, Photoshop involves lots of steps to do the job. So I would, I would rather do it in, in Lightroom and then it's not a perfection, uh, but you would, you would get the idea. So Sorry for the lag. So um, apparently what you saw right now, what I did was that I added blues to this, these mountains and increased the, the, the blackness in the, in the mountain. So this, what it did was that it pushed it backwards away from all the tree line, which is up right up here, right? So 
Use of colder color pushes it back towards the of the frame, and then use of warmer colors will bring it forward. Okay, adding saturation, adding details will bring it forward, and then adding cold color will push it backwards. Right now, I added dimension. Now, as you observe, the right side of the image right now is having more details, more contrast, more saturation. So it, it came forward, and then the hill here with with rocks on it is now having a cold color and it pushed back. So now I created a kind of a push and pull effect between the right side of the frame and the left side of the frame. All I need to do is that I need to guide you to the tree line right now. So I need to have kind of a, a, a light source which is right at this point. So you're able to see my, my screen, I'm guessing. Yes. Okay. So I need the light to come from somewhere to eliminate this, this uh, beautiful tree lines. So I know that the, my light source is on the top right hand corner, right? So now that's the light sword, which is which is right up here. Now, moment I put the light sword, which is right up here, you saw the lights falling on the trees, which is now popping up. That means it, it got separated from the background and the greens on the front got lifted up. So it added dimension in the sub, into the into the uh, into the in the photograph right now. So I will add one more dimension right now, which is huge. So now you need to bring atmospheric, uh, you know, haze into the mix, right? Sir Harsha. Yes. Uh, if you want to do the same thing in Photoshop, you use the selection and value change, or or. So if you want to do it in, in Photoshop, you will you will start creating uh, lots of uh, curve layers, curves, oh. right? So the same thing which is done here is is done uh, using curves and then uh, masking, right? So I have to select lots of masks. Uh, uh, you know I can I can do it very precisely in Photoshop. So the Lightroom does it very crudely, a little bit, per se. Right. So what, now what I'm doing is that I am I added a source of light which is which is right on the top corner as if uh, the lights it, it's a sunset time so I knew that light was was shining from the top right hand corner and uh, the haze is now being amplified by having lack of contrast. Right, so you can see the haze when moment the haze comes, atmosphere comes, it pushes really backwards because it loses the, the details. So the trick to make it a three dimensional image is as follows. One is use of contrast, the use of colors and use of atmospheric uh, values. So now I'm, I made use of all the three of them here. So one last thing which is there in the bucket list is to bring attention back to the, the, um, oh no. Is, is it still sharing the screen? Yes. Okay. okay. It gave me that blank screen again. So I was just wondering. Okay, now I brought your attention to the fallen leaves which are right on the ground. Okay, and and to the tree bark which are to the right side. So it's not done using Photoshop. I cannot accurately control here, but you get the idea. And then I push the, the, uh, the, the mountains on the left side really backwards by using cold color on it and then reducing the, the contrast on it. I brought the, um, the tree line which is on the ground forward by making it warm color and then giving it more contrast. And then finally I used a um, kind of source light haze, um, you know, uh, haze to 
push everything back to the uh, on the right side. So if you want to see before and after, this is how it looked like. Now you get the idea that what I did, uh, the left side uh, is the one which is before and the right side is the one which is after. So let me push this back. Yeah, it looks magical after you made the changes. Yeah. Right, so um, the, uh, the following from previous discussion, we I made use of the negative space, which is the, which is the, um, the hilltop right up here and then all these things. And then I placed the subject right on the diagonal line. I created a composition which had dimension in it, right? So which has foreground, middle ground, and the background. I created depth by adding, uh, you know, various um, saturation values and you know, change the values here, and then created an atmosphere by creating the haze there. So um, more can be done to this one but I'm just showing the tidbits of what can be done. When I pick up the, uh, the work of another artist, which I'm gonna work in a bit, I will show you more on this technique. Mm -hmm. So um, that's, uh, so I have uh, 8.45 right now. What time should I stop? Uh, stop maybe in 10 minutes. I will okay. have five for the artist of the month and then we can continue if anyone is interested after that. Get yeah, he has to come back one more month. Yeah, <laughs> it can take stay too long time. I'm sorry, this Zoom no. is is a, is a is a. I'm is serious. A... You have to come back one more time. Yes, yes, yes. Yasha, that was really wonderful. Yeah, it's not the Zoom. Yasha, your information is, was very very useful. Okay, yeah. I'll yes. work on. on the... Maybe we can be we can continue with the next month meeting as planned, but you may have. A, in between meeting only for this one, <laughs> so yes. to get the feedback. Yes. I, I have I have one more image being submitted by by people, and then I just want to show you what is before and after for that image, and then I'll I'll because uh, people requested me to show their image, so uh, I will I'll walk you through that one. So I'm curious which so, one you'll be. <laughs> so this is the one which is the uh, left side is the before, and then right side is the after. So. Let me uh, cut this off. You can't see anything. I see. Um, wait a minute. Apologies for that one. Oh, you. Wow. <laughs> okay. So this is the. Uh, uh, image which was submitted to me, and then I just worked on it. I, I could have shown you this how I worked on this one um, uh, just in a moment, so but I don't have time. So the left side is the image which is which is submitted, and the right side is the one which is processed. So the subject here is the reflection of the of the red rocks, right, and then the depth of the canyon itself. So as you can see, I used cold color. Uh, I'm, I'm pointing to the right side of the frame right now, cold color to push the, the canyon really backwards. Mm -hmm. And then I used alternative cold and warm color to create the depth. So rightmost is the is the farthest most point of the canyon. Then comes the, the, the warmer, which has been illuminated by the sun. And then, then comes the ridges, which is here. And then I, if you look carefully, I used warmer, calmer, colder color to create this, this kind of a pedestal. And then finally amplifying the red rock, which is right up here, and then a little bit of foreground. So that's the uh, one of the image which was submitted. And then another one. This is, yeah, yeah now we, uh, yeah, the, it was quite flat on the left side. And then the depth was yes. not. Yes, so you would, you, would, you would have more depth uh, given the, uh, oh. can you see this screen right now? Yeah. Okay. So, um, sorry. This was. This was. Uh, I don't know why. Okay. Go away. It's slow. Yeah. Okay. Um, so this was submitted by um, Saiket, I think. So the attention was. It was a big, uh, uh, you know, uh, photograph. I cropped it so that I could place the train on the diagonal line and also the source of the light on the other secondary diagonal. And I, 
I created depth by adding more light into this one and then layered it such a way that the Mount Diablo or the, uh, the Fremont uh, Mission Hills are pushed back. And then I brought the, the, the clouds forward and then the train is the focus point because of the light addition. So that was the, uh, the third one. And then this is Anandi's work, I think, uh, or maybe Saikat's. Uh, this is Saikat's work. Yeah, really good touch. So I was actually a little confused because there were too many things in that composition. So if you yes. see the original photo, there was reflection of the cloud on the water and there was and the clouds and the mountain. So I was, it there was, if I was trying to crop, what I was uh, missing out is basically which one to really let go of. Mm, so yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a beautiful picture. I, 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 I didn't take more than few minutes to crop it and bring it to that state because it, it had all the ingredients which I wanted. I, I wanted to create depth. I wanted to put them put them properly. So it, it just uh, flowed like, uh, you know, a few minutes. So this is another uh, photograph which was sent to me. And then here you can see that the left side is the, is the before which had mostly warm tones. And then for the depth to be added, you need to create warm and cold tones alternatively. So it's kind of a symmetry, like a rhythm which dances, right? So. Uh, uh, I added a little bit of cold to the to the, um, uh, the darker side, and I cropped it. The, it was the image was not like this before, and I cropped it to place the the main um, subjects right on the diagonal. You can see this. This is on the diagonal. This is on the diagonal. The only thing which I will talk about is the, is is a is a tangent which you need to avoid. One need to avoid in a composition. So there there is all. Everybody has a tangent. So I will tell you what a tangent in a, in a minute, but uh, anything which three lines join kind of gives a perspective that it confuses the eye as to which one is uh, in front and which is at the back. So there's a little tangent here which needs to be avoided. Apart from that, this is a wonderful picture. And then I also changed the light direction. So um, you can see the light direction which is coming from here right now has a uniform gradation from left to right, uh, right to left. Uh, whereas the previous image is pretty flat. It doesn't have a light direction. So, you know, that adds kind of mood to the picture. Um, thank you, Sri Hasha. That was a great critic. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. welcome. Um, this is the one thing I wanted to talk desperately. This is Gita's place, Gita's work. Um, so let me... Uh, Okay, so this this image uh, uh, wasn't like this before. I will show you how it was. I will reset this one. So this image was presented to me like this before. Uh, I went ahead and then uh, and then cropped it and then uh, did this way. So I'm I am very curious about creating abstracts. An abstract good. The nice thing about the abstract is that it should confuse viewers as to what they're looking at. It should ask a lot of questions and then make them associate their own experience into the into the mix. So I will never have any straight edges, right? And also have the edges very close to the uh, the boundary of the frame, and but not touch it. So um, so this was before, and I turn it around and then uh, cropped it a little closer, and then made sure that the edges come very close. The lines are not straight, and then it. It, it should create a disturbance in the mind of people who are seeing it. Then that solves the purpose of an abstract, according to me. So um, I hope uh, Gita would, would uh, appreciate this one. Yeah, I know for me, it was a flying eagle. Okay, I see. That was in my mind when I was making it, you know? I mean, I, I wanted the abstract view, but for me, it was the two wings and the eagle flying, you know? So this was taken by as a backdrop for a TV show, uh -huh. you know, I see. I see. It, it, it's it's not with me now. It is with the with the you know the TV. I think the the last one is the one which is submitted by uh, uh, Zoom is again. Hang on one second. Let me stream this one. Thank you so much. Sure, uh, that's that's a beautiful work. I I would love to do that one. It kind of gives me more mental, uh, you know. So this was, uh, this is from, I think, Rashmi, I guess. It's 
screen? Yeah. Okay. Yes, I submitted this one. Okay. Um, I did quite a bit of work on, on this one in the sense that I, I, I the back. Right. You don't see him, right? He got a, I saw a window. Okay, now he's back. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. So, this was a submitted image. And I was a little confused about uh, the foreground perspective and the background perspective because the angles are completely different. So uh, I, nothing against the photograph, but I, it just made me confused. So I, I would remove the background and then added one thing at a time to make sure that uh, it pops up. So as I mentioned, I used a contrasting color, which is the, the cold color to the warm color uh, that kind of brings the the foreground background separation. I added a light, which is in the front. As you can see, I turned off the light right now, uh, which gives you a kind of a um, perspective introduction into the subject. And then I added, uh, you know, I removed the, the extra light which was there and then added more contrast to the subject. Okay. And then this was the flat light which was on the subject. I added a directional light. So it kind of brings up the pops up the the image a little bit more so that's all this was for the uh, for the background so um hope prashmi like the way it was processed so yeah thank you so much it's looking beautiful okay you're welcome okay thank i will uh, i had more things on the plate but i will not be able to cover right now i think yeah. i covered only 50 percent of it yeah, um, we have another 50% next time. So that's it. <laughs> okay. We need so another. If there's any question, I, I will take up the question right now. And, yeah. And okay, so what uh, we can do, uh, yeah, the demo is very awesome. I think. Thank you, Sihasha. Thank, thank you so much. Really. I, uh, you want to make sure I finish the, the, the regular activity. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And we can extend if anyone wants to stay back. So let me announce the winners uh, for today. And okay. then we come back to Sihasha. Sure, <laughs> sure, sure. Okay, so let me start with the uh, butterfly category. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, let me stop this one.